So I, I'm definitely strengthened now. And I did not fall asleep during the prayer. So Mark chapter 5, verse 31 to the end. Uh, background, we because we went over and down Saturday, we don't have to... The beginning of the gospel, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man, came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And we're entering this time where we sh we studied about a little bit about Jairus, then seeing the unclean woman become the healed clean woman, and not just healed, but forgiven of her, and 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 restored, and not yeah, restored in a relationship with God. Jesus says, "Daughter, your faith has saved you." Mm. Now we'll enter the next scene starting in verse 35 to the end about and his daughter. Would someone like to read that passage for us? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. 35 to 43? Yeah. Right. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue, Charles, who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know it, and said that something should be given to her, given her to eat. Remember, boil, background, now let's enter the observation stage. Starting in verse 35. It's pretty profound. While reading it this morning, I saw things that I never saw before. So it's rich. Every time we look at God's word, we see something new. What do you see in verse 20, 35? It, uh, somebody came. Oh, man, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll go. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was just going to say that uh, it says that uh, he was still speaking. It's kind of curious. Like, what was he speaking? Was he giving a message, sermon, teaching? Just on that idea, you know, like. We know that um, there is a sense of urgency when the uh, official was saying his daughter's mm -hmm. at the point of death, but it didn't seem, you know, like Jesus was in a particular hurry, you know, being stopped mm -hmm. with the, uh, the woman in the previous passage with the hemorrhage. And, but, you know, he has a purpose for everything. Very good. What was he speaking? That's the question. Mm -hmm. uh, so while he was speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogues and, and synagogues house who said, your daughter is dead. Mm -hmm. So someone said, someone said to uh, the person that came from the ruler of the synagogues and told him, "Why trouble the teacher any further?" Mm -hmm. So that means that he, that Jesus was teaching, mm -hmm. while that guy came and told him that your daughter is dead. Well, yeah. I was gonna say this maybe interpretation, but it, it seems like he didn't believe that Jesus had the power to uh, to raise from the dead that. When they when the person died, that Jesus couldn't do anything anymore. Yeah, very good. That's the observation. That person didn't believe Jesus could raise the dead. Yeah, they um call him a teacher. You know, despite like you know all the miracles he's already performed, they don't see him as like a miracle worker per se, which is mm -hmm. interesting because like a lot of people, he's already gathering a lot of crowds. Yeah. Yeah. He also said, "Why bother him? Why trouble him any further?" Mm -hmm. Like him still wanting to come to the house it's still it's a bother it's a mm. trouble it's a trouble so he so just came to, so he came to jesus just yeah, to right. let him know to let him know that his daughter was dead to mm -hmm. give him the news but maybe uh, that person didn't have any any in mind anything in mind that he could have uh, uh resurrected resurrect uh, a man a human being so he just so he just came and gave her and, and gave him the news your daughter is dead say one thing is that i noticed um just from that verse it even speaks about you know they can lose their hope you know it's like saying like all oh, hope is over that's it your daughter's dead game over kind of thing mm -hmm. which you know it seemed like they don't really have much faith in him mm -hmm. when he says that he is who he say he is so 
Let's answer some of these questions. Jesus is still speaking. What was he speaking? Well, in verse 34, is Jesus is speaking. He said, you know, daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So, yeah, so after, after, she, after she told uh, the, the woman, and he says, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. So mm -hmm. then while he was still speaking, while he was still speaking to Maybe he was teaching, you know, um, I don't know. Maybe he was teaching, um, I have no idea. That's a good, that's a good, uh, uh question. But, um, while well, he was still speaking. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's good. Yeah. So, but then, uh, somebody came into her, oh, your daughter was dead. And then mm -hmm. someone said to him, you, why travel the teacher any further? Yeah. Pretty much the other person said, hey, um, why you wanna uh, uh uh why trouble the teacher any further? I don't know what does that mean. Like he said, like uh mm -hmm. why you why you bringing trouble to to Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody said to him to the other person, why are you bringing uh uh like problems like to Jesus? <laughs> so pretty much the person yeah. that answered that answered him uh didn't um didn't have the didn't have a, a, a that faith that Jesus mm -hmm. could do anything and and any and one second if you want you know yeah and reading this in the greek today it was much more obvious it was saying they came from seeing that your bible the house of is actually in italics it's not there in the original language so they came from the synagogue official it was like when i read it, i was like kind of weird the synagogue officials here but they came from the synagogue official what does that mean it shows you how close this person is probably a family or a servant from his house that is so closely identified with him. So verse 34 is basically when this event happened, it was in the synagogue, right? Not in the synagogue. By the sea. The synagogue. Oh, by it. Okay. Yeah, it could be by the sea. I mean, Jairus's house might not have been along the sea. So where he was by the sea, but they were walking towards Jairus's house. Think about Jairus. Think about his context, who he is. So what would his house be? What would the people around him be? How's their relationship to Jesus? There's more behind that question. Why trouble the teacher anymore? Let's think about that. What is the guy saying? Yes, and they're questioning his authority. Like, so pretty much, someone said, I don't I believe he can teach saying. Yeah. So pretty much, uh, he was like, uh, he's saying, why? saying why bother him? Yeah. 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 Then you you, uh, you took my, the word out of my mind, man. <laughs> but what does that mean? <laughs> We're why talking about what is that? So is this the first story? My voice is really not good right now. <laughs> okay, so okay. is this the first story where Jesus rose someone from the dead? Mm, mm. Very good. Good observation, yes. I think um, the question, why bother the teacher anymore, speaks a lot of this, your daughter is already dead. There's nothing that this teacher can do because he's just mm -hmm. healing people around and he hasn't rose someone from the dead. So if this is the first story that we're mm -hmm. in, this really like rose someone from the dead then it's very new to them you know i don't know if you get it yeah, yeah. i was thinking the same thing Cam. i was gonna ask the same thing <laughs> yeah okay what else <clears throat> remember the stigma that would come from seeking jesus help so this could also be attempt by the person to protect jairus like don't associate with jesus i mean there's no more reason to cause more problem by bringing him over and even if he doesn't raise your daughter, now you're going to be associated with Jesus and lose everything else. Yeah. Bring uh, of the bad news. And uh, this person doesn't believe that Jesus can wow. do anything. Uh, like most people, no one's ever raised someone from the dead in this time period. So, I mean, it's really remarkable to see that people don't really have the faith and the hope in him because, you know, it's remarkable that even in the Old Testament, what's his name? Elijah. I don't know if you remember the story of Elijah where he actually raised, I don't know if it's like he raised the child from the dead, but like he was sick yeah. and he, he did something and it miraculously, you know, the boy came to life. You know, that was like the first sign of like a miracle that actually happened. And you know, when Jesus came and walked among us, you know, it's, it's remarkable knowing that he's performing miracles and yet they forget, you know, it's like, it seemed like they don't really uh, who he is, you know, like when Jesus said, "Who you say, who do you think, um, who do you think what others say about me?" You know, some say they call him a prophet, others call him Elijah, you know, or John. So it's like there's there's a lot of questioning of like, um, you know, like 
there are some followers that that really like to be entertained, right? They like to see signs and miracles and yet do not believe. You know, it's like, where's that genuine faith when you see Jesus actually healing somebody? You know, sometimes they actually overlook something like that. I mean, even Jesus even said, <laughs> I forgot what verse it was, but not not many actually believe and they just come and see signs and miracles, you know? Yeah, but again, I, Elijah is an isolated case in the whole Old Testament. It just doesn't happen that often. Right. Probably not even a dozen times I could think of in the Old Testament, raising someone from the dead. Is there any other instance you could think about? Maybe Elisha might have done it. Elisha, Elisha, yeah. I think Elisha did it once. It's not a normal thing to happen. But let's bring in verse 36. You might notice something very interesting. What do you all see in verse 36? Do not be afraid, only believe. They want if you believe, you can move mountains. Yeah. Well, it, it looks like Jesus didn't uh, kind of ignore the uh, the thing that kind of implied that the guy didn't think Jesus could do anything. Yeah, yeah. Kind of ignored their doubts and went ahead anyway. Okay. Jesus overheard, so the guy didn't speak to Jesus directly. But he got to speak in such a way where it's not even a whisper to the man, right? The news spoken in a way that. Jesus, and probably not only Jesus, the crowd could hear about it too. Loud enough that Jesus could hear. Think about what Jesus said. I heard this on believe. Pastor. Or what the circumstances was. He said, only believe. That's why he only allowed, uh, chap makes a verse, he only allowed Peter, James, and John to go with him. Because they, they would believe, I guess, instead of having mm -hmm. the other negative energy around him. Yeah, something to think about <laughs> is, which Jesus didn't specess, specify, like, believe in what? The man believed Jesus could heal his daughter. It would be like believe the that anything is possible to Jesus, or everything is possible to Jesus. Yeah, everything is possible. Again, observations. What just happened <laughs> right before the bad news came? But, well, he healed the the uh, woman with the flow of blood, which everyone, no one else could do. Yes, he said, uh, baffled doctor. I'm sure that was a much needed encouragement at a time for Jairus to see this man is the real thing. And it's interesting because uh, I didn't know this until I heard Pastor John's sermon. But this man in the other, it says he he said, my little daughter has died, but if you come, you can heal her. So this man already believed that Jesus can raise from the dead. So what Jesus is actually saying is just keep believing what you had believed in the first place. Yeah. And uh Again, we come back to these verses. We'll just keep going, and that'll help clarify the earlier verses. What do we see in 37? He only wants uh, um, Peter, James, and John to follow him. He didn't want uh, nobody else to come, just just those three uh, uh, persons that he was uh, hmm. Peter, James. Why only a few? Yes, seem to, to bear witness of what Jesus will be doing, right? Mm -hmm. James and John, for whatever reason, they were the inner circle, which means at this point, he told the crowd and even the rest of the disciples to not go with them to Jairus's house. I noticed that it was only, um, actually, I wanted to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed there was like three disciples, but were the other disciples, were they, um, were they out healing the sick? Not yet. Not at this time. That's a good question. That happens in the next chapter, the 12th sent out. And I wonder if this would be good for observation for now. So what is that? What is this? What does 35 to 37 mean? Again, if you think along with me in the long term, how would you break this passage into different parts? It would be about a daughter's uh, healed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another, the whole part. Another daughter, but... I, know, I mean, um, another, uh, uh, okay, my bad. Um, 35. 35 to 37? I don't his, know. His timing. Hmm. His timing. Yeah. yeah, this is just the very initial stage. So, uh, I mean, well, if I were to try break it, it looks like thirty-five is kind of uh, basically kind of the bad news mm -hmm. comes, and then thirty-six to whenever is Jesus's response to that. Mm -hmm. That, and then I guess the final stage would be uh, Jesus healing, which I don't know, maybe like I don't know, is that. Uh, 39 or 40 to the end where it talks about Jesus actually going and healing her. So in this part, it might even just be 35 to 36. Question. Uh, when I say a synagogue official, is that from someone who is a daughter from synagogue official? I don't know much about the synagogue 
official thing. It's like a not like a teacher or like a an elder or something. Hmm. Yeah. In the original language, and it's it, it, in a sense, it means ruler of a synagogue. So, if not the ruler, at least someone who's in a higher position, hmm. uh, someone very important. And uh, and again, his name is mentioned here, which means may have known who this Jairus is, so known one, in the region. So it's one of the leader's daughter who is mm -hmm. right. Okay. It took me a while to figure it out because I didn't I was looking at this uh synagogue official and I was wondering like, is that like a title or is that like somebody if you look on our uh YouTube channel you could see the lesson from last time. You could learn more about uh twenty one to thirty four. Okay, I wrote his timing, the bad news, and usually it helps using words that are already there in the verse. Uh, you're not trying to make up a new word. If you could use something that's already there, that would help. I think a key why, might be why trouble the teacher anymore. I would say it has to do with a synagogue leader, right? Inviting Jesus to perform a miracle to his daughter. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing something that for him to believe, right? Because yeah. like it seems like he's inviting him. He's inviting him because he knows that his daughter isn't isn't either well or simply that, you know, he loves his daughter, right? Yes. 35, 36. What does this mean for the original audience? What does it show us about Jesus? Again, the Christians are under persecution. They're also in discouraging times. So what is this? A reminder to not be afraid to believe. Hmm. Yeah. Why not be afraid? Well, uh, Jesus has the power of God, so there's nothing he, he cannot do. So does it mean to the original audience, oh, uh, Jesus can raise the dead people in my life too? <clears throat> is is it is is do the original audience apply this by saying, hmm, don't be afraid. My daughter just died, and I believe Jesus can raise her from the dead. Is that what it means to the original audience? No. Yeah. No, no, I, I uh, possibility because... there, but it depends mm -hmm. on what what. God is trying to demonstrate to people mm -hmm. what he's trying to teach to the people. It's because it's like when the, when you got the, the bad news while well, your daughter's dead, don't bother, don't let's not bother him anymore. And as you said, he's trying to whoever it is that was giving him the news was mm -hmm. yeah. trying to tell him, okay, so this is your time to get out of this. You don't have to further um, embarrass yourself with Christ. You can kind of like let go and then go on in a way, and that way you you save face. And then Jesus yep. overhears it and basically says, just believe, continue to believe. Wow. Yeah, you're right. That's it right there. Trust in Jesus. Yeah. Difficult trials. So Primo, Jesus That's... is telling them, just trust me. Yeah, just and trust me. Not... Just believe in me. And it might not necessarily mean I'm going to raise your dead relative. Mm. It doesn't happen today. But we can trust in him even in the trials. We can trust in him. They think about these Christians who are being persecuted. They... Some of them may be former Jews and their families telling them, hey, you've already gone through so much suffering for no reason. Like, why why, why do this Christianity thing anymore? Come back to Judaism or to the Gentile. Come back to being a citizen of Rome where all you have to do is what bow to the emperor and everything will be fine. You can go back to your normal life again. Go through all this trouble with this Jesus. Hey, but how you can trust someone when you never have uh, uh, gone through trials before, you know? Okay. Uh, can you explain that? It's like, for example, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, if I have never seen, if I had never gone through suffering or or, or pain, and uh, and someone tell me just trust them, you know, and I'm like, bad, but I, but I never have never went through that, you know, like I mean, so it's it's hard. It's gonna be hard. It's not just just to say it by saying it, you know. It's like you know, uh, because when you're going through hard times, it's you know, it's it's hard to uh to just to trust, you know, mm -hmm. because a lot of worries, a lot of fears, you know, but um, especially like that you never have experienced experience something, something the, like that of what you're going through, you know, but uh, it's good that uh, the, 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 that's why God left us this word in here, so we can prepare ourselves, so we can uh, uh, learn from him and, mm -hmm. uh, and grow, grow in him. And, uh, and because of those reasons, we're going to trust him. Because we know yeah. him, we have we grown, uh, we grown, uh, we grown a relationship with him. But imagine if we don't know, if we don't know the word, if we don't know him, and somebody tells you, just trust him. How are you gonna trust someone where you don't know know him? You know what I mean? Yeah, you have to get to know him. That's very true. You can't just say trust in Jesus, and people are like, what does that mean? Yeah, you can, you can replace Jesus with any other name. But then also remember, uh, uh, okay, yesterday they asked a question to John MacArthur, right? 
and they ask him about oh that there's gonna be a uh, false teachers and false prophets and that they 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 will not they want they they would uh uh trying to deceive the elect ones. Then John MacArthur answered, well, he answered biblical uh, verse from the Bible, and he, and he told him, uh, well, um, their, uh, their voice, um, and he will follow him, you know? Mm -hmm. I forgot the verses, but uh, so pretty much, if I know who's my master, I will follow his voice. I know that I know the truth, you know? I know the truth, because because he put, he already put that in, the, in me, you know? So, so mm -hmm. it's just... It is, you know, like since I was a little kid, me without knowing, like I already knew where to go when I was in trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You gave us a very good application to leave with. It's getting close to nine. But trust in Jesus and not just like a blind faith where Jesus isn't telling him to believe like without knowing anything. But he just showed this man, look, I just, uh, this woman was healed and not only healed, but made clean, restored in her relationship with God. You can trust me too. I'm in control. So for us to get to know him and how his words right here, get to know him and his word. Any other thoughts or yeah. questions? I would say um, Jesus has the final words for it in everything and for everything. The people did not believe that um, there's hope, just like what Jaime, is that how I pronounce your name, Jaime? Yeah. So even though um, people are hopeless with the situation, it's Jesus who has the final answer in everything. And if I, I don't know if you guys see it, but I can see the also the here from here the story of how Jesus raised up Lazarus from the death. It has the same same picture to me because I guess I think Mara and Ma Mary and Martha also said to Jesus that if you could only come at the right time, you would believe. Mm -hmm. right now, right? And then Jesus said, mm -hmm. believe. And that's when he mentioned about I am the life, you know, I'm the ones giving the life. I'm the life mm -hmm. of resurrection and life. So I guess that's that's for us to remember that Jesus always has the final words and everything. Yeah, it shows even in the last book in the Bible that in the end we will all be mm -hmm. in the kingdom of God. We will just worship him. So um, I guess that's, that gives us a lot of encouragement today that whatever we're facing, it's temporary and we're mm -hmm. going to, yeah, worship him. And he's still he's still gonna help us, you know. He's still gonna help us even when, when we're down. And uh and uh and he's still like he's just as you know uh it's only take uh um just a little bit of faith, you know, just a little bit of faith and I uh, and believe and he will do the rest. He will oh, he will he will he will take you out of that the you know uh the those difficult times that he will he will uh he will lift you up, you know, and take you out of the, the, the misery. Yeah. Or if he doesn't take you out of the trial, he will encourage you to mm -hmm. keep you going through the trial. Yeah. He gave yes. the mm -hmm. goal with the unclean woman at just the right time. Yes. Imagine if the miracle didn't happen before the news came. That could have been a different story. After the bad news came, do not be afraid, only believe. Jesus mm -hmm. continues to sustain you know, the one thing I learned is that hope is like a, a strong connection, you know, and it's like, this might be like pulling off the script, but I was like, I was thinking like, I think I can't remember what, like where, but in Romans, somewhere around Romans chapter 10, which says faith comes from hearing, hearing by the word of God. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, that connection that the word of God gives you hope in, in his word. You, you build up your faith from, from the word, mm -hmm. you know, knowing his yeah. word and, 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 and you know, like when Jesus was talking to Peter, saying, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yeah. You know, three times he asked him until he finally said, you know, Lord, you know, you know my heart. You know, you know that I love you. And he said to take care of the sheep. You know, it's like, a, I guess you could say it's like a strong bond of, of knowing his word more, you know. Trust his word, know his word. Jesus stands our faith. Mm -hmm. Jesus has the final and only word, really, answer in every situation. Could someone else close us in prayer to help us apply what we learned today? I will. No one else will. Thank you for your power, Lord, that there's nothing that's beyond your ability, that you always have the final word, and that you are a merciful and compassionate high priest, and you want us to come to you with our petitions, Lord, and help us to 
come boldly before your throne and to you for grace in times of trouble, Lord. And thank you and pray give us a good night's rest. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, it's a Monday, so I need to get going earlier, but 